Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. And now there's a lot of study in terms of neurology and uh, positive psychology in terms of the flow state, eh? The flow state one of the uh, one of the lead researcher Mikhaili Mikhaili Sibiski is a lead professor in terms of flow state and the flow genome project has given some idea of how our brain interacts to develop an understanding of the nature of flow but before i explain to you this whole concept of the how our brain wave pattern and the uh, uh, neurotransmitters as well as hormonal play into, into our brain we got to go back to the islamic concept first eh? Okay, we understand that from our perspective, all those research are talking about the conscious and subconscious mind as well as the brain. For example, for the atheistic uh, professors in terms of uh, neurology or psychology, they will talk about only the brain only. All right, but we have a higher function. That means the conscious and the subconscious resides maybe within the capacity of our brain cells. All right. So the flow state actually extend beyond the flow flow uh, the flow state actually extend beyond the nature of the conscious subconscious because it got to go into the supra conscious mind. This is where we have connection with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that's why in terms of khushu, we are in a flow state when we have khushu in our prayer. And also I'll explain to you how this is in relation to uh, this Islamic uh, understanding of fana and baka, but. I'm explaining it from the perspective of modern psychology. Remember, I'm not taking this from the perspective of, say, Sufism or whatever it is. Huh? But I'm giving you an idea that there are a lot of research in where they are reaching a conclusion that we must have a higher level of thinking in terms of intuition. But where does intuition come, come, come about? We say it is not from the conscious. It is from the subconscious, but it is also from the realm of the supraconscious because we have our... SEM, spiritual, emotional, and mental. Huh? So our mind at the highest level is al akal al kulli, and the mind at the lower level is al akal al juzi. From the Isma Islamic perspective, we have a wonderful model that need a lot of research. But I'm giving you some idea of how this is then related to the flow state. Because when you are in the flow state, you're happy. You are very, very concentrated and focused in your work. You feel so relaxed. You feel that you're free from fear. You feel that you are close to a higher uh, being. All right. These are all experiences that people get during flow state. And a lot of this flow state are now being do done research with meditation. All right. So people who goes into meditation has a very high level of energy in terms of the brainwave pattern. Uh, very, very high. So how does this flow state in terms of our understanding from the psychology, modern psychology vis-a-vis -vis, all right islamic psychology maybe i explain it further one is basically there are four levels of flow state now this is from the uh, flow genome project one is the state of struggle the next one is release the third one is flow and the fourth one is recovery Every one of us, while we are talking, we are, we are in stress, while we are aware, we are, uh, when we are doing our work, we are in a state of struggle. So that's why we are generating beta brainwaves. Beta brainwaves are the conscious brainwaves that can affect our stress, fight or flight response. The stress could be, uh, you know, we're getting a nasty email. The stress could be we quarrel with our co-worker or the stress could be we quarrel with our spouses or friends and so on. So, at this level, we are generating a lot of cortisol and norepinephrine. Eh? That means we are giving our brain toxic neurotransmitters and hormones that cause us to be stressed out. So, if continuously we are in struggle, we will get into all kinds of physiological problems in terms of, for example, having depression, anxiety, in terms of our physical body becoming too degenerate to become 
weaker and weaker and finally we get a lot of chronic diseases from here we move if we want to move that then we must have consciousness the consciousness to change ourselves so we want to go into release so release at release we start the meditation or the start of our khushu or start of what we are going to do in terms of our relationship of getting away from fight or flight to release so when we do this we get alpha brainwave and alpha brainwave is the brainwave that is calming soothing and it is the beginning of uh, our understanding or our we are getting into the state of flow all right so here we we generate nitric acid to flush out the cortisol and the non epinephrine eh? when we are then we go into the later state all right in terms of our meditation or our zikrullah or our remember our tafakkur tazakkur circle we go into tafakkur here tazakkur and then we go into the state of khushu all right so we have at this level what we call flow this is where we feel there is no time and space we we we, we forget about this dunya we forget about all other things except what we are doing all right for example if we are in a zikr when we are doing this zikr we are thinking of the our closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that will be the uh, effect if we are doing say uh, reading a book we are so engrossed in the book that we forgot we already spent two hours or three hours or four hours or we are looking at nature and so on so we are in this flow state at the flow state our brain wave pattern from the eg we can get the theta and gamma brain wave pattern you can see that huh? all right and then this is where you generate the hormones and neurotransmitters dopamine endorphin and anabandanide eh? anabandanide is a cabinet a natural cabinet that gives you the feeling of pleasure tremendous pleasure then after going through the flow state you got to go to recovery at the fourth stage where you go through delta brain wave eh? so this delta and gamma brain wave very seldom you have if you are not having khushu or not having deep thoughts about Allah or not uh, deep thoughts about whatever uh, challenges that you are doing in terms of your research in terms of your reading in terms of even sports sports person eh? when you generate this brain wave you go into flow then to recover you have this delta brain wave this is where uh, you go back to the sleep that's why to get flow you must have full good sleep you recover and then you can overcome the struggle go to release go to flow and recover again but if your life is all 90% of human beings is always living in struggle uh, this is mentioned in the Quran Allah tells us uh, there's the ayat in the Quran where Allah tells us that uh, you're living in struggle you are always struggling uh, you are not going anywhere you're just pusing-pusing here but we have to slowly develop our sense of tafakkur tazakkur khushu go into flow and back again so how this is related to fana and baka in terms of our metaphysical understanding inshallah in the next video i'll explain to you that this is from the perspective of modern psychology of how we can understand this phenomena that has been described in a lot of our books written by imam ghazali Nur Qayyim, and so on that gives us this understanding of the flow state but they use the term fana and baka so inshallah in the next video i give you some understanding of this whole idea uh, inshallah to trigger some of you to think about some sort of research in terms of how we relate our tafakkur our tazakkur our khushu and how this can become uh, an understanding of uh, 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 closeness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of fana and baka inshallah